You're listening to WTOT 1000 FM, the home of the sounds you love. Over the past few welding videos, I've noticed something just not right about my TIG welder. I mean, it's not not working, I don't think, but it's just just not right. Like it's mad at me and it's pouting. I've basically been getting results that I'm not used to, that I don't expect. And today I'm going to look into it. And perhaps, you know, it gives us another chance to talk TIG. I'll be using my oscilloscope to look at what the welder is actually putting out, and we'll see if that jives with what we'd expect. Since we're here and set up, I'll step through sort of all the functions on my machine, like waveform kind of stuff, but specifically it's AC balance that's acting a bit odd. Now, we'll talk about what the functions do, like physically, and not necessarily how they're used in welding. That's a subtle but important distinction. In fact, it's the difference between one video on my channel and an entire channel dedicated just to TIG welding. What the f***? Now, I've got a ton of projects on the books, but I've been out of the YouTube game since forever, probably like two weeks. So consider this video me limbering back up. I'd like you to meet my TIG welder. This is a TX160, and as the name implies, it's a 150 amp machine. They're no longer around, but at the time were available from a few different manufacturers, or resellers I guess. Like it was the same exact machine, just in a different case or in a different color. They were always recognizable as the control panels never changed. It was literally always the same panel just maybe a different color. And as you can see, I got the iMac version with the silly plastic case. It's probably 12 years old or so at this point, but to date it hasn't given me any lip. When I bought this, inverter welders were a relatively new thing, so it was expensive and it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of modern inverter welders. I added that unicorn horn, because what isn't better with a unicorn horn, come on. On this particular machine, when I plug in a foot pedal, the panel mount amperage control is bypassed, meaning it does nothing when the pedal is attached. All of the current control, the full capacity of the machine, is run by the pedal. Which would be fine, but that means I can't current limit the pedal's range. If I was welding something small, say at 20-25 amps, and I sneezed, I could accidentally blow a 150 amp hole in the part. So I added another potentiometer. Now I can set it at, say, 80 amps, and the machine won't go any higher while I'm welding. The knob is up at the top because it's literally the only place left inside. The machine might look small, but it probably weighs 60 pounds. At the bottom it has dense style connectors. A gas solenoid in the middle, which I added a quick disconnect to when I got the water-cooled torch. You can see I had to go out and buy fittings. All of them. And then there are two remote connectors. One for a switch and one for a pedal. At the top, you've got the controls you'd expect for your basic modern-day AC-DC machine. We'll briefly get into all of these with the oscilloscope, and I'll show you what they do. On the bottom left, there's a selector to choose from stick, 2T, 4T, and some kind of spot welder timing function I don't think I've ever used in my life. Because I almost exclusively use a foot controller, the machine stays in 2T. I won't get into the difference between 2T and 4T as it's not really relevant to what we're doing here. The rest of the controls are more or less what you'd expect, an AC-DC selector, a pulse or frequency selector depending on which mode you're in. This particular machine will do 5 to 500 pulses per second in DC. I really wish it would go lower, but I pulse manually if I need less. And the AC does 25 to 200 hertz. I usually weld anywhere from 25 to about 100 in AC. I don't see much advantage in going higher. For a machine like this, it's intended sort of end use. I don't know how practical those higher settings are, but, you know, they could do it, so they added it. I'm sure when I first bought it, I was probably over the moon that I had a machine that could pulse to 500 pulses per second. And now I wish it could do one pulse every 10 seconds. Then there's the AC balance control. This goes from negative 20 to positive 20, meaning at the center, or zero, it's a 50-50 balance. You're getting as much electrode positive as you are electrode negative. And a negative 20, for example, would shift that to 70-30. So you get 20 more negatives than you have positives. 
Finally, there's the panel mount amperage control. As I said, this is a 150 amp machine, but the only time I personally hit that limit is with aluminum or heavier aluminum. In that case, I use a 50-50 helium argon in a, like a pre-mixed bottle. That effectively gets me a hotter machine. If I ever get a new welder, I'm definitely going higher. Though I think these days 180 or 200 is kind of the new thing. I don't even know if they make 150 amp welders anymore. Anyway, I've got this set to DC without pulse. It's the knob is set to zero pulses per second, just straight DC. This would be DC negative as you'd usually want for TIG welding. And we'll have a look at it on the scope. That'll set sort of a baseline for us and hopefully make the rest of the functions easier to understand. We'll sort of build on that and see what the other functions do to the waveform. Now, I'm no electrical engineer, at least not anymore since that last I'm no electrical engineer joke. So take this all for what you're paying for it. TIG welders are constant current power supplies. That means they'll constantly put out the current you set the machine to, and they'll adjust their voltage in order to do that. So while Mr. Old Shaky Hands here is running a weld bead, and the arc gap is sort of moving up and down all over the place, the welder adjusts the voltage of that arc in order to maintain the current I set on the machine. MIG welders, on the other hand, are just the opposite. They're constant voltage, and the machine itself adjusts the current in that case to keep it that way, to keep it constant voltage. Okay, so TIG is constant current. The oscilloscope, on the other hand, is a voltmeter with a TV screen. It'll show us voltage changing with time by drawing pretty little pictures on the screen. In order to see the current waveform of the welder, I'm using a current clamp. In this case, on the ground wire because it's easier to clamp to. The current clamp just measures the current going through that ground wire and spits out sort of a voltage signal to represent that current level. And that way I can use the oscilloscope to see what the current is doing. So on the screen, we're technically seeing a voltage signal, but it's a direct representation of the amps being pushed through that wire. You saw me set the torch up on a mag base. I've got a block of steel there just so I'm not trying to read my scope through a welding helmet. It's just there to block the arc and protect my eyes. Now for all of this, I'll leave the machine set to 40 amps. When I stomp on the pedal, the TIG welder will push 40 amps through the torch, through my bench, to the ground clamp, and back to the machine. Now according to convention, current moves from positive to negative, but the actual electrons move from negative to positive. And since my torch is connected to the negative side of my welder, like it's connected to the negative terminal, electrons will sort of come out of my torch through the pointed tungsten electrode and travel through the bench to the ground clamp. This is your standard TIG setup and is called DC electrode negative, or DCEN. Now I've got the current clamp set up to show negative voltage for the electrode negative setup, so we can keep electrode negative and electrode positive straight on our heads when we're looking at the pretty pictures. We'll see that in a second. Let's take a closer look at the scope. So as I mentioned, it's at 40 amps, and when I stomp on the foot pedal, each one of those little boxes is 10 amps. So it's almost 40. Looks like maybe it's 38 or so. So that's what DC electrode negative looks like. Here the center horizontal line on the scope is zero, no current. Anything below it is DC electrode negative, and anything above it is DC electrode positive. Since we're here, let me show you what manually pulsing DC looks like. I'm just going to pulse the foot pedal on and off, just like you or my five-year-old boy having the time of his life with the bathroom light switch. That's maybe a pulse, a pulse and a half per second. The thing to notice now is those pulses, they never go above that horizontal zero line. This is still DC negative. It's going on and off, but it's still purely DC. Now, actually, it's not turning off. You can see it's sort of alternating between 5 amps, which is the minimum of this particular TIG welder, and the almost 40 amps I have set on the machine. That 5 amps, at least at this speed, you can sort of consider the background or the base current. It doesn't completely go to zero, otherwise every time I'd push the pedal again, it would have to reignite the arc. You can also see effectively what is the on time and the off time. Here I'm doing this manually, they're about the same. So the machine stays at the higher amperage for just as long as it stays at the lower amperage. And truth be told, I have no control over that on this machine when it's in automatic mode, but we'll see that in a second. In fact, let's do that now. I'll set the machine to DC pulse at five pulses per second. That's the minimum this machine will do. So there you have it. That's 
you know, almost as consistent as I was with the foot pedal. And it should be five pulses every second. And again, you can see the on time and the off time between the base current and the peak current is the same amount. Again, I have no control over that on this particular machine. But in fact, now that I'm looking at it, I think I see another problem. According to the manual, the base current of this machine should be 10% of the peak current. So since we're set to 40 amps, it should be 10% of that 4 amps or 5 amps, which is the minimum the machine will do. Here it looks like it's more like 50%. It's at like 20 amps. That's both curious and sucky at the same time. I mean, it works. I'll be honest, I never noticed it unless it, you know, happened as of recent. The pulse welding still seems to do its thing. But you can see from the picture, I'm not going to get as much of a puddle freeze when that current drops back down to the base current. I'm wondering if that's related to my other problem now. Anyway, let's take a look at the other frequency settings. I'll just step through them one at a time. That's 10. That's 20 pulses per second. Then it jumps to 150. You can see it's starting to have a hard time now to recover. It's not keeping really a square wave there. And there's 500. 500 apparently is just cardiac arrest. There's no more square waveform there. It's a triangular wave now. I'm sure it probably works just fine while you're welding. But then again, I never really get into the high end of these pulse settings. So I couldn't really tell you if it's going to work the same or not. So there you have it. That's what DC electrode negative looks like and pulsed electrode negative. With that, let's take a look at AC settings, where the current does switch directions while we're welding. Perhaps I should take a moment to apologize. Maybe I should have said this earlier. I do realize that a lot of what I'm talking about assumes some amount of familiarity with TIG welding on your part that I've needed to take for granted. It'd be much too much to get into here, but suffice it to say that we're talking about settings that are required to one degree or another to successfully weld a variety of different materials with a single machine. TIG welders are extremely versatile for this very reason, for the ability to change the behavior of the arc on the business end of the torch. Mild steel requires a certain combination of settings depending on the specific weld you'd like to do. Aluminum, for example, require completely different settings. I'd guess the biggest difference is probably that between DC and AC, and we'll see that in a minute. All these other settings are essentially shades of gray to help tune the AC or DC current to better facilitate the weld you're trying to do, be it for penetration or looks or some weird position you might find yourself in, very thick or thin materials, and so on. I've become so used to even just these basic settings that I've come to take them for granted and can now notice when they're not working properly. For me, this machine is broken, even though it remains completely functional in AC-DC modes. I mean, it still welds. But I've just lost a bit of control that I'll need to now compensate for manually while I'm welding, instead of leaving it up to the machine. So we were getting to AC functions. To go into AC welding, I just flip the switch and set my frequency. Let's go with 75 hertz just for the sheer thrill of it. For now, I'm going to leave the AC balance to zero. This should mean we have a 50-50 mix of electrode negative and electrode positive, but let's slow down there, cowboy. Let's have a look at the scope. Well, now ain't that something. This thing looks like it's getting worse every time I look at it. So at first blush, this might look like the pulse DC we saw earlier. But notice now the waveform is crossing the zero line. The current is now alternating. They like to call this alternating current. Before, when we had a steady stream of electrons going in only one direction in DC, we now have the current switching it up, going two different directions. First sort of going quote-unquote forward and switching and coming back, forward and back, forward and back. And in this case, it's changing directions 75 times per second, since that's how we set it on the machine. Now, at the risk of beating a dead horse, I just want to sort of reiterate that for the fifth time. The distinction is very important. In pulsed DC, this entire waveform was either below or above one of these lines. It wasn't changing directions, it was just sort of changing speed or intensity. Kind of like an inchworm. Moving in one direction, it just goes faster and then slow, faster and then slow. In AC, the current is now zipping forward and back 75 times per second, kind of like my wife trying to parallel park. What you're looking at now in the scope is more than I expected to be talking about. I had found a balance issue. But if you look at it now, you can see we're not even getting full current on the electrode positive side. It's struggling to maintain the square wave on the negative side, but it's still almost getting to 40 amps 
If you look at the top side, it's stopping at 20. So an electrode negative, I'm getting the full amperage setting of the machine, and an electrode positive, I'm getting half of what I expect. This isn't what I was seeing yesterday. Yesterday, I had a balanced waveform, just like you'd expect. It still looked a little bit weird on the electrode negative side, but I was getting the full waveform. Evidently, I must be dealing with a ticking time bomb. I did check the arc gap and the tip of the tungsten. I thought maybe, I don't know, it was getting weird and doing something to the electropositive side, but it's a nice clean cone with just a very little shiny ball at the end. It's, I mean, it's a perfect looking tungsten tip. Anyway, we're talking about balance. We set the balance on the machine to zero, so the current is spending about half its time going one way in electrode negative and half its time going the other in electrode positive. Same amount of time in each, so it's balanced. Or pretty close, I might not have the knob exactly on zero. Let's do this again, but turn the balance on the machine down now to negative 20. Did you just see that? I was getting no electrode positive on that. See, now the frightening thing about that is if that happened while I was welding, like without being attached to a scope, it would sound exactly the same. I would have no idea what was going on. Like, it wouldn't be welding the aluminum in this case, but who knows how many red herrings I'd chase trying to figure out why. Let's do this again, but turn the balance on the machine down now to negative 20. All right, so with the negative 20 balance, the scope appears to agree with what I'd expect. I now have more negative than I do positive. Of the total waveform, it's now spending 70% of its time in electrode negative and 30 in electrode positive. So if you'd turn the balance to positive 20, I'd expect just the opposite. And herein is where the original problem lies. My machine is stopping pretty much at 50-50, or zero balance. The knob is turned all the way to the right to plus 20, but I'm getting a 50-50 mix on the screen. So I have no idea why this is happening. I mean, technically, or if it's worth sending in for service. Not like, why is this happening to me? I suppose I'll have to get a quote and see. Yesterday I was wondering if it was as simple as a bad potentiometer in the panel, for the AC balance problem that is. But with the weird base current and DC pulse and now this lopsided AC waveform, well it's not looking promising. I mean my welder is kind of old and I have pushed it hard over the years. But given the cost of a new machine, the machine that I would like, well I might have to learn to live with this one for a little while longer. So that's it. No happy ever after ending. But maybe you found something of interest in there. Thanks for watching.